I saw a patient with mitral valve incompetence. He's been started on vasodilator treatment to lower blood pressure. Why is that? The professor will tell you. Well, when the valve is incompetent, the left ventricle has two routes to ejection. If the resistance in the aorta is high, more blood will choose the lower pressure left atrium. So lowering aortic systolic pressure reduces one of the driving forces to regurgitation. Right, so how do diuretics work? Imagine a pot with a lid that doesn't fit. If you lower the fluid level, it won't splash as much. When is surgery needed? When the valve leak is severe and the patient has symptoms. In mitral incompetence, the left atrium sees the regurgitant volume early, so symptoms tend to come earlier than in aortic incompetence. Oh, I remember. In aortic incompetence, if you wait for symptoms, you may be too late. Yes, but in some situations, the cords may rupture with a flail leaflet, and then you have sudden severe regurgitation before the ventricle has a chance to adapt. Then you'll get acute pulmonary edema. This applies particularly to degenerative mitral valve disease with myxomatous change. It's not proven, but we use beta blockers in these patients to reduce the force of contraction in the hope we'll reduce wear and tear on the valve. So how do I tell when regurgitation is severe? There's lots of different criteria on the echo, such as the width of the color Doppler jet or the regurgitant fraction. But most of these are prone to measurement error. I like to keep it simple by looking at left ventricular size. A large regurgitant volume returns to the LV on each beat, so the end diastolic volume goes up. So the apex beat is displaced and the X-ray shows cardiomegaly? In more severe cases, yes. When do you use echo? To monitor the LV dimension to tell if the lesion's worsening. But be careful to ensure you aren't making it look worse by measuring the hypotenuse. So how do you do this? The acoustic window needs to be optimized so the beam is perpendicular to the short axis of the ventricle. This applies to both systolic and diastolic volumes. How do you tell when valve incompetence is functional? Yeah, where it's secondary to heart failure, not the cause. The mitral annulus is stretched due to remodeling of the failing ventricle. The end systolic volume is increased, not due to the valve lesion. So be careful if the end systolic volume is already enlarged when you first see the patient. You would be more confident that it is primary valve incompetence if you've observed the left ventricle enlarging over time. Oh, there's so much to know. Yes, we'll need another tutorial. I can't think of a closing quip. How about I just sing? Pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga choo-choo?